welcome. Hi, thank you for uh, letting us speak tonight. My name is Craig Zimmerman, and I live at the corner of Forest and Jay right here, and I'm lucky enough to live in Old. Uh, Can you talk a little bit closer into the microphone? Yeah, perfect. This is a, a map showing uh, w the current development in our area. The blue are apartments, the purple are businesses, are industrial, and you'll notice that the gray scale are the homes that we have left. I have missed some things such as the high density uh, dwelling uh, with the co-ops, and my position is that I really request that we follow the design guidelines in, in considering this project. You can see what the nature of our neighborhood already is. When you expanded Fifth Street, I really appreciate, and I remember Rochelle speaking up and Brett Lee saying we'd had letters from the neighborhood about ex the concern for traffic and extending it down. And you extended the traffic, what do you call that, calming to Fifth Street. What that did for me was important. There is now a fourth, fifth and J, a electronic crosswalk. What the value to me was it felt like a community. I lived on, and that's what I'm really looking for, and I think this really flips our community already. This, some of this is due to the 70s, before we had design guidelines. I lived on Clare Lane for 11 years. It took Terry Almeida with a uh, lion, that's eight years to show me homes. And I finally found a home here, and I came here and I walked around, I would park my car here at eight in the morning, what is it like? I'd come at five at night and park, what it is at night? What are the street lights like? Are they into the home? I would walk the neighborhood and I met people. I was surprised at all the people with carriages and young people. And I'd really like to keep the nature of my neighborhood. Some of these, that's really, is that an apartment? It's across from me. It's a, uh, is it a town home with each one with five bedrooms and a loft for a bed? These are not, these temporary residents change the character of the neighborhood. When we have permanent long-term members, it makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, good evening. I really appreciate the chance to address the council. Uh, my name is Joel Brungart. I live uh, at 434 J Street um, in Old East Davis. Um, and we live in a historic house on the uh, National Historic Register. And I'm also a licensed uh, contractor for the state of California. And I have a business here in town that uh, I have a business license for, for 10 plus years. And uh, we recently did a project uh, at our place that uh, was uh, building a carriage house with an apartment, uh, and we're working with much stricter guidelines with the National Historic District. And initially we sought the uh, uh, input of the neighborhood, and uh, we were assigned a subcommittee with the Historic Commission, and we had, I think, you know, transparency throughout. And it worked out to be just a great project. And I think as a, a neighborhood association, we also have a pretty good track record of working with both homeowners and developers and trying to work through, you know, things like variances and setback and all those kind of things that can really affect the character of a neighborhood. And, um, you know, I really kind of feel that uh, there was a concerted effort to really not engage the community, uh, our neighborhood, on this trackside project. Um, and I went to the city website, which is a terrific website, I might add, and according to Zoning Atlas page Q14, I see that uh, I was really curious as to how the track site was being uh, defined at this point. It's an M MU, mixed, mixed use uh, lot, adjacent to an R2CD area, which is our neighborhood. And not to get too much in the weeds here, but uh, R2CD, the basic uh, tenant here is no principal building shall exceed two stories or 30 feet in height. And that's pretty much defines our neighborhood, I would say, by and large. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, kind of hard to sort through the mixed use part of this. Um, I will get to this. Uh, basically, the uh, primary plane of the front should not appear taller than those typical structures in the neighborhood. So my question just uh, very quickly, I just. Or your time oh, okay. expired, so you, All right. have, you can. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Just Sorry. Yeah. Right. We appreciate it. Alan, welcome. Had to give myself room to prance up to the front here. Um, Alan Miller, um, I have a quote for you. Um, I'm not excited about the possibility of this becoming a rental, student rental mini dorm situation. I think that staff's explanation in terms of the bedroom situations are. You gotta be somewhat fooling yourselves to think that lots of students can't be crammed into multiple bedrooms. It happens all over town. There's lots of places in town where that's happening and that's disconcerting to me. And that is a quote from Lucas Frerichs uh, two years ago. 
um, regarding a uh, core transition area project. And ironically, um, the same person who said this seems to be investing in a project that is um, uh, doing the very same thing in a core area transition. And, um, you know, I, I did, it came to me that really, I don't believe this. I don't think it's going to be a rental. And from everything I've heard, because, you know, when you have 39 people investing who are in the community, and then you have a couple of hundred people, guess what? We find out, oh, I know them, oh, I'm friends with them, oh, I know them, and you know what? We're hearing what everybody has been talking about, and nobody heard anything about six stories, and I don't think it's gonna end up as six stories. I don't think it was ever intended to be six stories. And why is the six stories right next to all the houses? Well, because you don't start off with that. And then when you go down a floor, and then you turn the building, and then you say, oh, it's not rentals anymore. You go, look, we compromised. Well, guess what? You never intended to do that in the first place. Now, that's fine if you're an out-of-town developer who we can all just you know, say, hey, it's an out-of-town developer. But we're talking about us. This is Davis versus Davis. And I got an um, email today, and it was called Davis Together. And you know, we can do this together. I haven't talked to one person who says they don't want a development there. And you know, the design guidelines were from all of the parties, the developers and the non-developers, and that's Davis working together. We can do this, thanks. Thank you, Alan, perfectly timed. Yeah. Welcome. Good evening. Hi there, I'm Valerie Jones. Um, I've been a 38 year resident of Old East Davis neighborhood. And, um, I'm a former chairman of the Historic Resources Management Commission, and I'm a graduate from UC Davis. Um, I'm also the owner of the 1890 Victorian known as the Tufts Home. This is the first time I've spoken here to the members of the council, and I'd like to start with just a bit of the history with you. Um, in 2007, mass participation by community members, Chuck Rowe, myself, hundreds of other people, planning consultants from Berkeley, excellent planning consultants, city staff, I don't, resulted in design guidelines for Old East Davis, Old North, core area, downtown area, only in 2007. This was expensive, it was time consuming, and we thought we had something in place that was visionary. Since then, former councils, former city councils have understood the importance to retain a historic district feel in Old North and Old East. For example, if you've been in Old East, you'd know there have been three homes relocated from various city sites in order to preserve them. Each has an individual character and contributes to the historic districts. Two are at 3rd and J, known as Solar Housing. The other is a small gray house that happens to be located right next to Trackside. The vision for Old East Davis was to create a historic preservation district and to save older homes throughout the city. I hope that this council will continue with this vision. The vision was not to disregard current zoning and without a community process. The intent was there a sense of connection with the houses and the residents. I hope this council will continue with this vision. Brett Lee, I was gonna quote you from 2013 you ask the city council, you ask city staff to do what I'm asking. If possible, the council directs staff to identify all the zoning changes, design guideline amendments and ordinances that would need to be changed in order for Trackside to move forward. And I'm gonna ask please you to ask the Trackside people to do a pre-application, please. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is David Harshaw. I live in Davis. Um, and I'm gonna speak about Trackside. This body has a precious charge. This body is charged with protecting Davis's neighborhood. And I think this body should think twice about whether the pr proposed Trackside development here is going to irrevocably change Old East Davis. This body also must consider that what you do today has repercussions for tomorrow. Development sets a precedent that is a slippery slope. One track side will likely engender more. By itself, you may think this is benign, but 20 years from now, Old East Davis may no longer exist. This town has many beautiful, different and divergent neighborhoods. Some may want to live in a track side, some may not. Um, I don't live in Old East Davis, but it is one of the neighborhoods 
that I would consider living in because of its unique history and its character. The good citizens of Old East Davis have chosen their neighborhood because of what it is. Please don't alter it out from under them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Um, Commander Walk, City Council members. That is how you pronounce it. <laughs> if you could, if you could uh, state your name for the record. Uh, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm Larry Gunther, and I live in Old East Davis. Uh, my wife and I bought our house there a year and a half ago. Blah blah blah. Two minutes. Okay. So <laughs> I am very much concerned, as with a lot of my neighbors, about the trackside development uh, in our neighborhood and the putting downtown buildings that aren't in downtown. Uh, we understand the site in question is transitional to downtown, but the proposed development would be by far the taller than any building downtown. So that doesn't seem transitional. The adjacent buildings, including many single family residential houses, are all single story, so six story. Indeed, anything more than one story, by definition, does not seem transitional. All the properties on the east side of the alley adjacent to the proposed project are single story, single family homes, including, somebody mentioned, 921 Third Street. Uh, it's the bungalow that Davis, actually, City of Davis successfully and energetically helped to protect. Um, okay, 41 seconds. The point, and I do have one. Um, I'm going to talk about tomatoes and gardening. You need eight hours of sunlight, full sun for most gardens. You can think about tomatoes or you can think about anything else. I'm sure you're all intelligent beings. These calculations were completed last week, less than 10 days from the summer solstice so that in any other season of the year, the following events will happen earlier than the time stated. Given the distance from the 78-foot structure to the backyard fences of the homes to the east is 30 feet, the end of that tape from where you guys are sitting, imagine you're in the backyard of uh, Old East Davis neighborhood, those yards will start to be shaded at 2.50 p.m. The backyard's completely shaded by 3.20 and the entire lot of all those houses by 5 p.m. Thank you, sir. Good evening, council members, um, fellow members of our community. My name is Kemble Pope. Um, I am the project representative and the managing member, project manager of Trackside Center LLC. Um, we own the property at 901 through 919 Third Street. And for those of you who know me and have seen me speak at uh, public comment, you know that I try to make a joke at the beginning to lighten the, the tone but tonight that doesn't seem appropriate. I want to ensure that everyone here recognizes that I take seriously, as do all of my partners, uh, the concerns of our neighbors. And we want to have a productive dialogue with each and every one of you. I am a 13-year resident of the city of Davis, making me one of the uh, newest members of our uh, group. I was a member and chaired the Open Space and Habitat Commission, as well as the Climate Action Team, which produced our Climate Action Plan for our community. I own and reside at my family home at 516 G Street with my wife, Catherine. I'm not going to try and attempt to respond to many of the statements I've heard tonight uh, from last week, but I do want to say that we are open to talking to anyone about anything. And we sent a letter to the Old North Davis Neighborhood Association, and I just want to read the first paragraph from that, but the, basically we said we want to meet with you. We apologize that our preliminary outreach efforts to our neighbors regarding our proposed re redevelopment project did not meet your standards for collaboration. It has always been our intention to work together with the entire t community to create a beneficial project, et cetera, et cetera. And we acknowledge that we have strained the relationship with the neighborhood. We are committed to improving our communications and repairing the relationship with our neighbors. And I wanna look each one of you in the eye and let you know that Valerie, I truly believe that. You don't know me, I don't know you. I want to talk with all of you. I want you all to know how we got to where we are. Alan, I want you to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we got here. And for all of you to know this project is not set in stone. There is no process laid out. There is nothing in the city documents that say how 
an applicant is supposed to and we'll reach out to neighbors. So we're doing the best that we can and we're going to continue to do the best that we can and we hope that you will all work with us in that venture. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Kemba. Welcome, I think you will probably have the final word on public comment. My name is Ashley Hill and I live at 402 I Street and I'm here to talk about the track slide project, surprise. Um, I guess my main concern is I think it's extremely disrespectful for a group of people with knowledge of the design guidelines to put forward a project that so blatantly violates them. I think it's disrespectful of all of the core neighborhoods and their residents. I think it's disrespectful of the offices of the city of Davis. I think it's disrespectful of all the people who put in so much time and effort to put those guidelines together. And I think it's disrespectful of the collaborative process that went into developing those guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Uh, seeing none, I will close. We'll, we'll get to the consent items, don't we, sir? Um, we'll go ahead and close public comment. I think um, I do plan to bring up at long range the issue of, of trackside to talk about kind of how best to have um, this, this dialogue about it. Uh, this is the second meeting in a row that we've had a number of commenters on this subject. I think it's an important discussion and I'm gonna bring it up to my colleagues and, and get staff's advice about kind of how we have that conversation that, uh, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine to come to public comment. Um, it's, it's, it's your right, it's, it's a law. But th I think there may be a way that we can talk about kind of a way to have a, uh, a public discussion on it that doesn't happen in just these two minute pieces in public comment, so. Uh, but I appreciate everyone being here. Thank you, Campbell Steve. On that, I will uh, move on to the consent.